So we're going to explore the evidence that protons and neutrons are not fundamental particles. Because for a long time, we thought that these were indeed fundamental particles. But when we began to do some experiments on them, it seemed like, well, hang on, there's something inside of them. So the first piece of ex the first piece, piece of evidence is the SLAC experiment, which stands for the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center Experiment. So in 1968, the scientists there performed the deep inelastic scattering experiment. So what they did was they had, let's say, a proton here. And they shot electrons at really fast speeds down a linear accelerator. We're going to go into what linear accelerators are in the next videos. But basically, it's this thing that can basically shoot an electron at really fast speeds, close to the speed of light. So this electron goes hurling towards this proton. And what they thought was that, okay, well, if there is an internal structure to the proton, then we should see, you know, if, if there's, you know, some, some kind of internal structure, then we should see that it kind of bounces, you know, deflects about to these ones. If there is no internal structure, then it should just more or less kind of either pass through or it should just bounce like a normal bouncing off a ball kind of thing. What they saw was that there was scattering and this kind of scattering could only have been explained if there were three distinct scattering centers inside our proton. Now, because we saw the scattering, it's likely that the proton was therefore not fundamental because it should not have small things inside. That was the first piece of evidence. The second piece of evidence was the particle zoo and theoretical considerations. So, the years 1950s, 60s, and the US had plenty of time and money to create new and powerful particle accelerators. Again, particle accelerators are basically just machines and they're able to whiz around things like, for example, protons really quickly at each other. So they smash them together. Now, what happens is that when you smash these particles at really, really fast speeds, when you smash these particles really quickly together, you create new particles. So if you have these two protons coming together, they have a lot of energy, and we know that because they're moving really fast, we know that E is equal to mc squared. And so what happens is that some of this energy and the sheer nature of this smashing motion generates mass and, and in the sense of new particles, right? So new particles are made, new particles are created. What are some of these new particles created, you might ask? Well, um, <clears throat> we can't really uh, see them because they're so small. They're smaller than a proton, right? They're smaller th than a proton. These are quarks that we, that we are making. Um, so we can't observe them directly. But we, but in, so instead of observing them directly, we can look at their properties. For example, we can't observe magnetism directly, but we can see that north and north repels. We can see the properties of it. So we can see things like the mass and the charge of these new particles, of new particles. And so we saw a lot of these things. So for example, we saw things like pions, we saw kaons, we saw um, muons, we saw we saw sigma particles, chi particles, um, lambda particles, omega particles, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different combinations of particles. We're, we're talking hundreds of new particles. And most of these like pions are roughly equivalent to like a big heavy proton kind of thing. And so the scientists were like, well, hang on. It's probably unlikely that we have like hundreds of fundamental particles. That seems, it seems a bit ridiculous. It's like, um, you know, that, it seems a bit crazy that the universe is made of, you know, hundreds and potentially thousands of unique particles. And so it makes sense that we have this kind of 
f even more fundamental language of quarks. For example, there are up quarks, there are down quarks, there are top quarks, bottom quarks, uh, strange quarks, and charm quarks. And so if you combine these in a unique formation, you can create a new uh, thing. Like, for example, a, a omega um, particle is made of charm, charm, and a bottom quark. And for example, a proton is made up of a up, up, down quark. So you have three of them combined together, you get this new thing. It's kind of like how it was kind of a bit sus that uh, you know there were hundreds of elements, and really it makes more sense that it, they're not all unique. They're actually all just made of protons and neutrons mixed in different combinations. Likewise, all of these hundreds of particles, like these, you know, uh, um, sigma chi particles, are actually, actually just combinations of different amounts of quarks. And that is the and so that makes more sense. And so that's the evidence, and we're going to go on to evidence that there are particles that are subatomic besides protons, neutrons, and electrons, which kind of also gives us further evidence that there's more than we expect when it comes to our model of the atom. See you there. We offer physics, chemistry, and math tutoring. For more insightful explanations like this one, head to tutorgum.com.